everybody. Nice to see y'all again. Once again, welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Rap Without Today. I'm here with QL of Landfill. Say hey. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Hey, man. Thank you for coming here, and thanks for taking time out to do this. Oh, no worries. Uh, it's been a while, so I, I haven't actually done an interview in a long, long day here, so this will be fun. Nice, nice. All right, all right. Uh, so why don't you introduce yourself to the audience out there? Uh, what up, everyone? I'm QL of Landfill. Uh, QL is a derivative of uh, an old name I used to use, QRADL, which uh, it's a long story behind that one. Anyway, it basically just means that I will not be stepped on. I am not going to be the underdog. I am, well, I guess I'm not going to let life tear me down. Um, I, I won't go much deeper than that. But uh, anyway, uh, I was, was trying to figure out how to make a name that was more marketable for myself because nobody, I was tired of explaining why I called myself what I did. So I just went with QL. And then I realized QL was a Norwegian ska band. And then there was QL the rapper. And then I just, uh, yeah, so uh, Landfill Productions is uh, the group that I work with. My main producer is Alpha Omega, and he's he's part of Landfill Productions. And I just I just ran with it and started working with them. So I'm hoping that uh, we can all make it together. They're they're based out of LA. Uh, I'm over here in Vancouver in Canada. And yeah, so that's the story behind my name and who I am. Well, a bit of who I am. Oh wait. Am I going? Am I going much deeper than that? I can't even remember the question you just asked me. <laughs> no, no, you you doing good, man. You doing great. So anyway, um, my story is pretty. It goes pretty far back. Um, I started making music when I was fourteen. I uh, just to work through my own head and try and get through everything in my life. And uh, I don't know, just a teen angst. Like you, you know, it's not the end of the world at that point, <laughs> but. But for me, I uh, life really, really liked to attack. <laughs> I, anyway, I, long story short, I ended up spending three years in an Australian prison where I, like, just, I, I don't know how I got there. It was just a bad point in my life. Got met up with the wrong people at the wrong point of it, I guess. And, um, wow. Yeah, that was, that was scary as hell. Um, so, like. But while I was there, I learned guitar, taught myself a little bit of Mandarin. Don't know why, just I just wanted to learn. Um, and I, I wrote about 900 pages of lyrics, which I'm still going through. Um, after, like when I got home, lost my father, my best friend, who took me in after prison, oh, lived with wow. him for about two years. Yeah, I actually still live in the house uh, where I was living with him. Um, I live with his family right now, but uh, yeah, so um, I've experienced a lot of loss in my life, and my music mainly is, it, it's its projecting healing, if you will. Like, I, I, I actually wrote something to an artist the other day that, uh, like, just, who just lost his mom, and it, his name is J-Props, but, like, the... This is the best way I think I've ever explained it. It's basically, let's see, where is it? It's it's music is not about making money for me. Like it never has been. Here it is. So I've lost almost ten people who meant the world to me. More that were friends, my father, best friend who took me in after prison, my friend Sarah who was counting down the days until I got out of prison and died with no known cause six months before I even came home. Just ne she just never woke up. There was no drugs, there was nothing. And there's so many more people that haunt and heal me immensely. Although through it all, I'm thankful I had people in my life who meant enough to me to give me those emotions. There's both positive and negative in everything and whether I'm missing them or devastated, I'm thankful I ever had them because there's so many people who never had the opportunity to have people like that in their lives at all. Either no mother, no father, or ones that were so emotionally absent that and abusive they would have been better off not knowing them in the first place. No matter how sad I am, at anyone's loss, I try and remember that. And that's basically the message behind my music is just, it's life will beat you down, but there's always going to be something ahead. Oh my God, wow. Um, 
Yeah, and that's I use music to work through the emotions that I have no way of talking about that I don't know how to tell. And that's that yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's thank you. That's why I do music because I I would do it if nobody ever listened once. It's just my way of working through my own head and my inner thoughts. Oh, wow. That's good. I heard that you have a brand new radio show coming, so why don't you tell us about that? Uh, so you want to talk about jailbreak? So, um, when I was in when I was in Australia, when I was in prison, uh, before I came out, I was interviewed by a woman from a ra- from one of the radio stations out there. Um, it was for a show called Jailbreak. Uh, basically, what they do is they come into prisons and even talk to artists who are out of prison. Uh, mostly Aboriginal because it's run on an, an Aboriginal Indigenous station out there. Um, and like I have uh, Cayuca in me. I'm, I'm part Native as well. So, but Canadian Native. So, out there they don't really count that. But I mean, it's still for that sh- for that purpose they did. But uh, anyway. Um, Basically, they interview uh, prisoners, former prisoners, people at risk of prison, or any minority, or like anyone who has been discriminated against, basically. Um, and they just advocate to show their music to the world. Um, I had an hour segment, and uh, the woman who interviewed me, as I was leaving the interview, she told me I had a voice for radio, and that I should try and pursue a career in it. I, I, guess she was serious so um she actually messaged me a a little while ago and she's just like i found you uh i was like oh well that that interview was over five years ago um so like she basically uh, she wanted to re-interview me and then after a bit of talking and showing her some of my newer music um she uh, she was like hey would you like your own segment so I, yeah, hell yeah, I do. Um, it's a, not going to pay me anything, but any avenue I can take for promotion for both myself and like anyone I work with, that's somewhere I want to go. Mm. So uh, I should be getting a regular weekly show soon, uh, just like an hour segment here and there. Um, and yeah, so that that's going to be... That's going to be a good experience. I, I always actually wanted to do a bit of that. So, yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, all right, all right. I'm very excited for you. Thank you. So, is there anything else you want to know about that? Or where do we want to go from here? Um, not really, unless you want to provide anything else about your show. Is there anything else we should know about it? Uh, it's, no, not really. It's just uh, Corey Radio, 94.1 in Sydney. Um, it airs all across the country, though. That's about it. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, cool. All right, let's get to the action part. All right. All right. So these next... So these next few questions are going to be about your music. Okay. All right. So what inspired you the most? What was your big inspiration um, in the music game? My biggest inspiration? So like what artists, what's uh, in general? Um, Well, man, I I have a lot of inspiration. Basically, I, I listened to a lot of underground hip hop growing up, but the first song that ever got me even listening to rap was Coolio Gangsta's Paradise. Well, that came on instantly. I freaking vibed with it. I that was like, mm-hmm. yeah, that was my first step into hip hop. And then, you know, obviously Eminem, all of that, um, just Slim Shady LP, freaking Marshall Mathers LP, Eminem show. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, and then, um, but the big thing was, uh, I think when I started, like, 
I, Linkin Park I was huge on. I love rock rap. I always have. Like, that's more teen angsty now. That I, now that I'm a bit older, it seems a little bit less, you know, what I what I normally do. But I still I still like them. But they're just one of those things that I can't really listen to anymore because I've just listened oh, to them so all right, much. All right. But at, Atmosphere. Atmosphere was a huge one for me because because it's a blue collar rap. It's just that type of music that um, mm. it, it makes you think about life and like it's similar it's just that emotion that that you have that the everyday person has because we, we all have all right, things all right. to work through you know um there was there was other things immortal technique obviously tech nine um tech nine's huge i love that i love rapping fast never gonna get one never another one yeah, oh, wow yeah. you're cutting out a lot so. oh yeah uh, uh, don't worry, I got everything on my end, so even if I'm cutting out, I got a pretty decent recording over here. Okay. Oh, uh, okay, so... Oh. Yeah, um... Yeah, I think th th there's a lot more influences. Chris Webby, that one I have to mention. Chris Webby is one of the main, main artists that got me back into this. Yeah. Mm just that lyrical flow that lyrical style that just hard hitting just you know just work through your life and freaking have fun mm. the, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just add this to my list yeah Chris I'll Webby add to my list 100% Chris Webby all day I had a new favorite artist mm. I've never heard I've never heard an artist where I didn't skip a single song he's ever put out on the first play at least. First time I hear a new song, it's always at least something I want to listen to. Yeah. Uh, so what we got next? Or is there any Okay. Um, in an alternate universe, what would happen if you were not a musician? Um, I'd be dead. Probably dead. Or just... Yeah, I... Well, actually, I might be rich. There's a good chance I'd be rich because I wouldn't have put everything I had into this. I sometimes feel like a madman in my little cave. <laughs> mm. It's just like, my bedroom is a studio, my freaking... Yeah! I don't know. I, 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 I would say I might have a bit more of a social life, but I had a pretty massive social life for the longest time, which is why I mm. didn't put much out for a long time as well. Uh. <laughs> yeah, no. They actually probably consist a lot of me just sitting around eating ice cream and watching anime. Who knows? Mm. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, okay, um... Let's see. Sorry, my brain's fried. Um, what would be your dream collaboration? Um, I'm actually putting together a grant application right now to uh, do a song with Chris Webby and Chris Calico. So um, I'm also trying to put together applications so that I can take the next few years off music. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I if I get this grant, then it's not even just going to be a dream collab. I've already got them priced out at 10 k US, um, and it's all about just filling out the paperwork and seeing if I get accepted for it. But, but yeah, Chris Webby and Chris Calico. Let's see if that happens. <laughs> Chris Webby, Chris Calico, <laughs> QL of Landfill. Let's go. Oh, uh, say that that called me a banger. Yeah, if I can get ten grand together. <laughs> but I, I, I'm I'm pretty good with my paperwork, so let's see if I can do this. I I have a good feeling about it. All right, all right, cool. Well, that, that, that'd be really cool. I can't wait to see that in action someday. Yeah, me too. It'll be within the next six months to a year. So, let's see. All right. All right, here's a funny one. Um, have you ever gone through a, me uh, uh, excuse me, a writer's block? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. I've gone through writer's block. I've freaking tossed a book at a wall, thrown my pen in the air, freaking just stepped on it, broke it, just like, nope, can't do it today. And uh, just... Well, like I can, I can write forever, but uh, the main thing is that 
if I think what I'm doing is garbage, then I just don't bother and I keep moving on and get frustrated. Mm. But then nowadays I don't even write. Like I literally just sit in front of the microphone and freestyle for hours on end until I hear something I like and then I just run with it and keep freestyling until I have a song. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, well, I have three ways of writing. Uh, that's one of them where I just freestyle until I have a song. The regular, I just sit down, listen to a beat, and start uh, writing and rapping at the same writing and rapping, writing and rapping until I work things mm. out and then the third way is a, like uh, it's a new way I figured out how to write where it's uh, I literally just put on a beat and I just start writing like I'm writing an essay I don't say a single word I just start writing how it's flowing in my head and that usually comes nice, up with some nice. of the better lyrics but the flow is garbage so I gotta rework it but uh, yeah that, that method comes up with really good lyrics but it's just that the flow was never mm-hmm. there cool good method yeah. So yeah. All right. Um, also, uh, um, add to your uh, add to the jail jailbreak thing you said earlier. Um, right along with your new plans, you're having a new album. Can you tell us about that? Well, this one's not my album. This is going to be for the Discord group. Uh, I'm in uh, the R- the RJB. Um, basically, so. I put together a long list of criteria, but I wanted something that we could put out as a group that would be a lot easier on us than trying to write all new material, try and make all new anything. Like, I mean, we can, we probably will throughout the process of it, but basically I'm going to get all the artists who and producers who want to come in. I'll get the artists to submit five of their best songs, five of what they think are their best songs. Um, Basically, that'll give us some leeway so each artist those five songs will be put up for vote and then the group votes on them who thinks what's the best song because as artists we fall in love with our own music we are not very subjective we don't know what our best music is or what our most marketable music is at least we know what's our best music to us because it's something that we're proud of but the ones that are people's favorites are often nowhere close um in fact the ones we think are our best songs never land at all but So I think this way, if we have people just listening to our music and then telling us which one of those five is your absolute best, and then we put all those on an album. Now, here's the thing. You can't put them all on an album and then throw it back up on Spotify because Spotify will be like, oh, go go screw yourself, basically. Um, So my idea is have all the producers in the group as well this is a way to get everybody involved all the producers get together and they can go solo they can work on their they can work together whatever just make beats to all the chosen songs so yeah, I'm opening this up to every skill level, every everything, because we got some really good artists, we got some newer artists, but like uh, overall, we could make this a really good album, and it's all going to be our best music. And hell, we could even cut a verse out from here, cut a verse out from there, and then like splice them together and make it all work. But it's going to be a collaborative effort between all of us. Now, at the end of it, when we finally have this, if everybody starts putting in like twenty to hundred bucks, anything, like we get twenty, twenty-five people working on this album, if everybody throws in 20 to 100 bucks that's 2500 dollars that's enough to pay a real marketing firm not one of those fake freaking instagram i'll promote you for 10 bucks type no screw those guys they all suck and actually i just troll the hell out of them for fun um anyway so none of those you get a real marketing firm so like i've been working i've been talking and i've actually written a grant application for these guys underdog music um and if i get that they're going to promote me as an artist but it's 2500 dollars to get them to promote you but also there's other firms too we could look into it we'll do our research but we got to get someone real and then that promotes the entire group it promotes every artist on that album and everybody gets somewhere or at least some sort of recognition Mm. I'm actually having a meeting where I'm just going to tell everybody about this pretty soon. Mm. Yeah, so that's that. Oh, yeah, it's going to be called the uh, Remix, the RJB Collab Collective. At least that's the name I've got right now. I don't know. We'll put it up to vote. We'll find like it. We'll find something. I'm no good with names. The best ones are just random. (laughs) They come to me at the most random times. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll talk about my personal 
album that's going to come out after whenever you're ready. Oh, cool. Yeah, sure. Um, here, there's there's one other album I'm working on. It's called Hereafter. Um, so the RJB thing, that's I like that group a lot, and it's a good group of people to work with. Now, my solo album, the one that I've been working on for a long time, that it's something that's going to come out as it comes out, basically, because I can't force it. Uh, the if you see the album cover the bottom half is uh just a desolate past it's like um it's just in prison drugs just freaking just everything that my life was before just pain and hardship and the top half of the album cover is just me looking onto a brighter future uh, it's just like uh, it's just sunshine over the mountain you're gone you're you're finally able to get there hereafter cuz here after this and we will prevail i'm still here after all that i've been through i'm still here after everything that life has thrown at me and that's why i called the album hereafter um uh, just because all right, all right, yeah. Cool. yeah yeah no matter what we've been through it's where we're going that's important and that album every song on it's going to be a deep dive into my soul Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, that, I think I think that's about it. I got quite a few songs recorded, and I'm actually going to start releasing a few pretty quick here. Um, I'll probably play you guys one of the ones I'm working on. I um now here comes something really fun. This is about the best part of the show. Okay. Um. So basically, based on what you said, I'm not really sure if you're a rapper or not. So, um, I'm just gonna go. Yeah, I'm a rapper. Okay. Good. Okay. Rapper, producer, um, engineer, everything. <laughs> oh, everything I see. Literally okay, everything. Okay, you. you want graphics done? You want video editing? I freaking learned everything under the sun so I didn't have to pay anybody to work on my music. Nah, I thought that's just a lifesaver. I had to make a resume for the Canada Arts Council, and it's nothing but 12 pages of skills, not to brag or anything, but when I started filling that thing out, I even I was surprised. <laughs> Wow. So if y'all there have heard, this is the part where you wrap it up, which means that you get to display a piece of yours. You can freestyle, tease out something that's coming in the future, or one of your songs, a uh, part of your song that you already released. I mean, can I, can I freestyle and throw a song? Cool, cool. Uh, I'll, Be I'll, ready, everybody. I, I'm going to freestyle and I'm going to throw a track up. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this beat, though. Oh, wait. Can I make that work? Let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, just... Okay, let's see what this one is. Hey, baby. Oh, this one sounds all right. Let's do this. Can you hear it? I'll play it again. Oh, can you hear the beat as it's going? It's on right now. You can't hear the beat at all. Well, you'll be able to hear it when it plays back. Yeah. So, oh, this is gonna be good. I'll send you the playback of this because I know you can't hear it right now, but this is gonna be interesting. Understood why this life could beat me down and never think about the way I was walking around through the upper ground. And I've been waiting to be the top tier. Now I'm nearing the edge, and I ain't gonna disappear. And never gonna tell them why I gotta do this in my mind. Sitting, I don't know. Maybe I'm just waiting to vibe with everything that's happened in my life. And yes, I don't get it. Whether or not you know this is copacetic, and I, I don't need any need to understand what you've been talking about. When I've been walking around this place, the zone is out, and I've been down, but never round. Alright. And you 
can't hear the hook right now with the hook, so I'm screw it. I'm just gonna freestyle for a couple minutes here. Just I'm gonna do this one beat. I have no idea how long this is, but there might be two or three. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just gonna go for it. This is fun. Just tell me. I wish I could tell myself what I was meant to do in my life, but who knows? Maybe it's rap, maybe not. Maybe I'm just gonna fall in fire. Maybe I'ma drop back down to the ground and everyone around me will hear the sound when I drop. Uh, I'll do a superhero landing. Everybody knows when I've been doing the like saying everything I have inside my mind is just canned of response. I don't know. Maybe I just don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But now I just wanna be another man who got another plan. But I don't understand where the hell I'm supposed to be with my life now. Maybe I'm just going upside down. Yeah, I lost my job. Damn, I got a year off to work on music every time I do it, man I don't give a damn about the world around me Is it so falling cause of COVID? Fuck it, I know where I'm bound to be Let's see, is this beat still going? Oh, I think I got one more part here So where do I go? So this is my end game, apparently I'm just gonna do a little interlude here. So there's that. Wow, that was that was that was cool. That was that that was good. Not gonna lie. Yeah, just wait till you hear it with the beat. It's gonna be good, <laughs> especially once I'm done editing it and making my voice sound more pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I may I may throw in an actual song of mine too after this, just a short one. Just uh, I'm gonna throw in a snippet of something I'm working on, because I got this nice little opera track I'm going with. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's just gonna be a one verse and a hook. It's called uh, well, so far the working title is Horizon, but I have no idea. It's literally just me going oh, on the freaking hook, and then freaking like just a verse. Anyway, you'll hear it. <laughs> This life and get some insight Ain't doing nothing but sitting tight and right about now I wonder what if I miss my mark If I did I'd be dumb not to take another shot at this I know maybe I'm afraid of growing old along with everything inside of my head Looking to the past as the path behind me fades to black and a moonlit sky There's no going back but as of right now you can witness my life in living color Every love lost days long gone tears shed laugh they have loved life almost as much as the love that I got from my mother and all those years ago when I lost I thought I would never recover when and they went and locked me away Now you'll never get me back down under <laughs> Yeah, so um, what else we got here? Is that is that the gist of it? Is that wrap it out? Am I wrapping it out? Was that was wrapping it out the, the, the end of it? Or? Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right, I guess I wrapped it out. 
You know, you need a slogan. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A slogan? Okay. Good time to consider. Yay. I just wrapped it out. Got to wrap it out. Let's wrap it out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's nice. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> Every show needs a slogan. And, I mean, whether you're Joe Rogan or not, even Joe Rogan's got a slogan. I don't know what the hell it is. I just remember him talking about how he, when he got Fear Factory, he thought the show was never going to go any further. Anyway, I do a lot of word association. Oh, yeah, the end of that joke. Eight years later, I'm standing over a woman eating a tray of donkey dicks saying, Go, you can do it! Sorry, I love Joe Rogan. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so um, I, think, are we, I think we're good with that. I'm Q Well of Landfill. This is my rapping voice. Love you. <laughs> rapping voice. <work. laughs> Hilarious. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, man. Thanks for the interview. I really appreciate it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. And uh, thank you for taking this time out. And um, right now, what you're going to do next is uh, just lastly. Um, this is what they call um, in shows and movies called the end credits. So, if you uh, do you have any shout outs, any last words to say, any advice to give, you know, just shout out to uh, <laughs> Landfill Productions, who, um, man, I, I wouldn't even be rapping if it wasn't for Alpha Omega, to be honest. Like, he kept sending me beats, beats, beat after beat, and he's just like, right, right, right. Eventually, I started writing. So, landfillbeats.com, um, QL of landfill.com. Um, let's see, that has all my social media. So, like, I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, um, freaking Instagram, all, all QL of Landfill, except for YouTube, which for some stupid reason I can't change from Q rated L. So, uh, look me up on everything. I'm literally on. On everything LinkedIn where do you want me to go with it I'm, I'm on a bunch of sites I can't even read the language of um, so anyway um, uh, after that yeah the RJB yeah the RJB has been freaking awesome um, it's I, discord and reddit are apparently the places to go for good musicians um, and Facebook they're just spamming the hell out of you anyway uh, let's see who else do I want to shout out um, uh, my mom some guy named Gary I never met and um, uh, oh yeah, you, Musical.ly. I don't know your real name, but thank you. Thank you for the interview.